Hey, this is Corey Kerr, and on today's Talk and Draw, I'm going to talk about the value of creative work and exposure or exploitation while I draw this. And as always, you can find me at CoreyKerr.com. I'm all over the internet as well, on Twitter and whatever else. Um, and this poster will be available for sale, and if you want to know how and where to get that, then you should sign up for my email newsletter. I don't know if everybody goes through this, but I'm getting to the point in time in my career where I kind of want to warn younger creatives of some of the lessons that I had to learn the hard way. It wasn't that long ago that I really got started, you know, 10 to 10 to 12 years ago, but there's just a lot of things that I think I did that I heard kind of about, and I heard other people talk about that you could avoid or you could do better or do more correctly. And then as I've recently started teaching, I found that those experiences that I had and those things that I've learned that I can pass on have been extremely valuable to students that listen to them. And I thought this might be a good opportunity to be able to get that word out even more. Um, and hopefully I can save some people some heartache or even give some existing creatives who already have careers and everything, some ideas or just something to listen to while they're drawing. Um, in any case, this particular piece is something that I'm trying to do to to get the message out there of, of you know, working for exposure. There's a great um, Twitter account called For Exposure, and it just it just has people just trying to get um, trying to get creatives to work for free, and uh, and to do it for the exposure, quote unquote. Um, and I think most of the time, 99% of the time, that's just somebody trying to get something for free that they should pay for. Um, but there are you know occasions where that exposure actually is legitimate exposure and not exploitation businesses really should pay for work and artists really should charge for work. And so it's kind of an encouragement on both sides to value um, what illustration, graphic design, music, um, you know, movies and photography and whatnot bring to the table. I mean, they, they create value. And the fact that there are a lot of businesses, usually small businesses, um, that try to exploit artists, they try to exploit musicians and creatives and whatnot, to get things for free, to get work for free. And there's there's this weird misnomer out there, and I'm not exactly sure what it's based on, where graphic design, illustration, photography, you know, uh, music and whatnot is not worth something. And I, I just want to talk about that, but but basically that's exploita exploitation. And it's not as cut and dry as I th used to think it was. Um, there's a lot about exposure and doing things for exposure. I'll just tell you a, a quick story about... 10 to 12 years ago. Um, I was fresh out of college and um, working as a graphic designer at the time, uh, doing a little web programming, a little photography, a little video editing um, at this small production house. And uh, my roommate and I were contacted by this business. He, he approached us and said, hey, we've got this great deal. I'm launching this product and, and you know, I'd, I'd like you guys to bid it out. You know, it'll be, it's going to be huge. It's going to be awesome. You know, you really sold it as this thing that was going to revolutionize whatever, something to do with bottled water. I can't even remember what it was. Obviously it didn't revolutionize anything because I can't remember what it was, but um, I mean, he was just selling it really hard about how great it would be for our portfolios and everything. Usually this is a huge red flag. If anybody starts coming at you right away, telling you, how great it's going to be port for your portfolio and what a good experience it's going to be. And they start selling you on um, everything but the product itself and the payment that they're going to give you. Um, they're trying to get something for free. And so I was a little weary, but he said, you know, I'd like you, I'd like you to bid it, you know, and he wanted us to do this huge identity package, basically build an identity package from scratch do a website and a bunch of stuff. And we were really inexperienced and I can't remember exactly what our quote was, but it was something around four or $5,000, which was for what he wanted, a screaming deal. It was way, way less than it should be. But we didn't know what we were doing. We were really new. I think this might've been the first time we'd ever actually bid a project. And so we sat down and we guessed, you know, we haven't done, hadn't done straight out of college, hadn't done a ton of stuff at that point in time. So we didn't have a lot of experience of how long things would take or anything along those lines. So he came back and he said, you know, um, and we went back and forth about, you know, two or three times. And, and he kept, he, each time he would just kind of, he would just kind of knock us down, you know, and it was like kind of the, kind of being negotiated down by degrees. Like if he, if he had come out and said, I want you to take, you know, $3,000 off your price, we would have been like, that's 75% of what we're asking for. That's crazy. 
Um, but it was just like, you know, does this really take that long? You know, and he just kind of brought us down, 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 down. Until finally, I was talking to my roommate and I said, do you, I mean, can we do this for this price? You know, and he's like, I guess. I mean, it's a ton of work. You know, we're doing it. We're doing it in, in our free time. We're moonlighting. So it's going to be evenings and weekends. You know, it's our free time. And it's going to take us, it's going to take us, you know, weeks and weeks to do all this work. It's a ton of work. And I said, well, yeah, I mean, I guess it seems like it'd be a good experience. And, uh, in any case, so we came back and we said, okay, we'll do it for $1,250, which was so much work for so little pay that it was ridiculous. Um, I could have made more money just getting a part-time job at McDonald's. And so the guy says, yeah, yeah. Now we're, now we're in the ballpark. And I was thinking in the ballpark, this is like crazy low, you know, I'm working for nothing at this point in time. And, uh, and he said, you know, I think, I think we could, I think, I think we can do this. It's a bit of a stretch. It's a little outside my budget, but I think I can make this work. If you can just bring it down 50 bucks, just take $50 off. And I think we'll be, I think we'll be where we need to be. And that was where just huge red flags went up. And I was thinking if this guy is going to nickel and dime me about $50 after I've already discounted 75% off of my original bid, which I thought was a pretty lean bid to start off with. It's going to be a nightmare working with this guy. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll tell you something, little side note, the, uh, the cheap clients who nickel and dime you during the negotiating stage, they are typically a nightmare to work with. And, uh, and I've since learned that I would rather not deal with people who, um, are cheap and, and we'll talk more about that and the value and, and why, why that is. And it's not because I'm trying to I'm trying to squeeze everybody for every dime that they're worth, but it's because it's a value proposition, and uh, and I don't I don't work with people that don't value what it is that I do, and we'll talk more about value uh, a little bit later on because there's different types of value and 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 things along those lines that we can that I want to I want to go over because there is some value in uh, exposure, there is some value in experience, there is some value in those type of things. Um, but let me, let me talk to you about that in a minute. So luckily I had all kinds of red flags go up. There were just alarm bells. And I just started to get this little gut feeling that this is a bad deal. This, this is not going to be a good thing. And so, and so I told the guy, um, you know what? Uh, the price is $5,000. And he said, whoa, 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 hold on there. Don't, don't be hasty. We're just talking about 50 bucks here. And I said, no, we're talking about $5,000. And he said, that's a thousand dollars more than you originally bid me. And I said, yeah, I've gotten to know you since then. And it, it's $5,000. And he said, Hey, you're, you're throwing this deal away. It's going to be, it's going to be really big for you. It's going to be awesome. And I said, I said, listen, I don't think that you value what I bring to the table. And, um, and that's okay. You don't have to, you're not required to value me, but I know what it's worth. And it's not $1,200. It's $5,000. And, and that's a fair deal. And, uh, you would be getting a lot of value out of that, out of that exchange, but I need to get the value out of it as well, or I'm being taken advantage of. And, uh, and he said, you're, you're not seeing this right. I mean, this would be great for your portfolio. And I said, listen, I appreciate you looking out for me, but why don't you let me worry about my portfolio? Um, and you worry about your business and this is a good move for your business. And if you'd like to move forward with us, that's the price. And if not, that's fine. I also require 50% upfront um, before we get started. And so as soon as I get a check for $2,500, um, we'll get a contract going and, and we'll move on from there. And he said, well, I can't do that. You know, I mean, that's just, that's just not within my budget. I said, okay, well, that's okay. That's your decision. I uh, appreciate your time. Um, and you know, let me know if you ever, you know, if you ever come to, uh, come to have a budget that'll meet the price for what you need. And so that was the end of that relationship. And you know what? I didn't regret that for a second. I, I actually, I felt so relieved and so not proud, but just so excited that I was able to stand up for the work that I do. Because here's the thing, art and music and illustration and design and whatever you want to call it, creative work, things that people tend to write off as fun or entertaining or whatever. And they think that it doesn't have value. They 
are extremely valuable. And the fact of the matter is that a business or a business person or someone comes to a creative and asks for them to do something, design my logo, build my website, design my website, you know, I need a flyer, I need this. They're doing that for one of two reasons. One is they need something that will add value to their business that they can't create themselves. Or two, they value what you bring to the table and they want to involve you and partner with you and bring you in so that they can have that value and use that value for themselves. Okay. The single reason that they'll come to you is because they need something that will add value to their business. What is the value in design? Ask yourself, what's the value in design? Is it the amount of hours that it takes to do that design? It's not. It's not the amount of hours that it takes to do that design. Picasso, at one point in time, um, was eating dinner and a, and a waiter came and said, hey, would you, uh, would you draw me a picture on this napkin? So he, he drew a picture on the napkin and, and Picasso you know, was going to hand it to him and said, that'll be X amount of money. And the waiter said, that's, I mean, it took you like, it took you like four minutes to draw that. I mean, that's, that's a ridiculous amount of money. And he said, no, young man, it didn't take me four minutes. It took me 40 years. And his point was that the value that you bring to the table as a creative is not in the actual time that your pen is on that paper. It's not in the actual time that your hands are on that mouse or that stylus or that keyboard. It's in the decades, the years and years that you have gone through extra effort to learn skills and to develop your sense and your eye and your gut to the point where you create value. And it's not, it's, you're not clocking in at McDonald's. You are producing something extremely valuable that will help that business make money. And if somebody takes, if I, what is the value of a logo, right? Is the value of the logo in the time that it took to produce it? And, and logos can take a long time if you do it, if you do it correctly and they are simple, simple is one of the hardest things to do, but what is the value of that? It's the value of competitive advantage. It's the value of differentiation in the marketplace. It's the assumed quality in a customer's mind. If a customer comes across a brand and they have a crappy looking logo and their, their, their store isn't designed well, or their website looks like dog meat, they look at all that and they just kind of assume, oh man, these guys are kind of, kind of, you know, they're kind of cheap or they're kind of phoning it in or they're just getting started or man, they just aren't. There's kind of this, this negative devaluation of everything about that business based on um, how they present themselves, their identity package, based on their style guide, based on their, their logo and the colors and the font choices that they make, based on the layout of the store, based on the design and the illustration and everything that accompanies their advertising, their marketing campaigns, their online social media presence, the copywriting and, the, and how poorly or how well it's written. There are quality assumptions about the products and the services that those companies are offering based on that initial, that initial perception, that initial reaction. And that is a significant amount of value. If all things being equal, right? If everything is exactly the same, or you have one business that has a really nice design and great advertising and really clean, well-designed um, uniforms and trucks and you know everything else that goes along with that. The commercials are high quality. They're not annoying. They don't seem like local slapped together garbage. You're going to have an assumption of quality that will allow that business to do two things. One, do more work and two, charge more money. That assumed value that they are bringing to the marketplace by saying, you know, we are professional, just look at us. That assumed value has increased the value of their brand. It's increased the value of their products and services. And that is because of the design. And so to say that, you know, design isn't worth anything or that it's only worth the amount of time um, that it takes to, to produce it, that's, that's just either completely dishonest or very, very uneducated. And you just don't understand what's going on. I like to give ben people the benefit of the doubt and assume you don't understand what's going on. And so I want you to really, I want you to really think about that for a bit. Um, creativity is value and, and people should not build their business on the backs of those that they've exploited.
And so this illustration that you're watching, you're watching me put together right now is really about some of the bad business practices that are out there on both sides of the equation. There's two things that need to change. One is I see a lot of students, I see a lot of recent graduates massively undervalue what it is that they bring to the table. Now, they're young and inexperienced, and they might not know as much as somebody who's been doing it for 10 years or 20 years or 30 years, but they still can do something that brings value to that business that that business can't do or that business would do it themselves. And the fact of the matter is, is that by undercharging, you're devaluing um, everything for everybody. And people say, well, how could somebody pay, you know, $30,000 for a logo? Well, what's Nike's logo worth to them? It's worth a lot. I mean, that brand recognition and they embroider that on everything, right? Or how do you charge how do you charge a couple thousand dollars for that? It's so simple. Well, yeah, but you have you don't understand the years and the hundreds and hundreds of hours that it's taken to get to the point where that designer can get something to be so simple. Simple is de is deceptively uh, difficult. It seems like it should be easy. Simple design is one of those things where people say, "Oh man, I could do that." but you couldn't think of it, right? And it's the thought of it that takes the training and the years of experience. Business owners are being dishonest by exploiting creatives who add value to their business and at the same time expect a quote-unquote fair price for their product or service. That is outright straight-up hypocrisy. I mean, there is no other way to put that. If on the one hand, you say, hey, listen, you know, you enjoy doing this. It's kind of fun. Why don't you put it together? You can use it on, you know, I will allow you to uh, put it on your website and say that you did it. And there it'll build up your portfolio. And, uh, you know, let's, let's do it for 50 bucks, you know, or just, just do it because I'm an awesome guy and look at what a big wig I am. And I will tell all my friends that you designed my logo and blah, 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 and all this stuff. And then on the other hand, uh, he turns around and, and he would never offer his services for free. He would never do the work that feeds his family and that he pays his employees and that he makes a profit doing. He would never do that work for free, right? And so that is, that is a massive amount of hypocrisy. And so businesses and relationships in general are, are transactional. And it's, it's kind of cynical to think of friendships as transactional. So let's talk about businesses first. first. But human interaction in general is an exchanging of obligations and an exchanging of value, right? And so if you have a business relationship between a vendor and a business or a business and a customer, let's do business and customer really quick, okay? So a store has a bunch of products and they want money, right? And people go to that store and they have money, but they want some of those products. And so there's a value exchange there where the business values the money of that customer, right? And what they can do with that, okay? It's not like they just hoard these pieces of paper. It's what they can what they can do with that money. And the customer is looking at those products and saying, I want this product. This, this piece of paper that I have in my hand, um, you know, this stack of bills isn't worth anything to me, but what I can get for it is worth something to me, right? And so what they do is I'm going to give you this value Mr. Store, and here is monetary value, and you give me this product, which I find valuable. It's an exchange of value, right? Now, it has to be balanced, and if it's not balanced, then the relationship will sour. It's not a good relationship, right? But if I go to a place, and I give them money, and they give me a product, and I like that product. I like the service that came with that product. I like the environment in which that product was presented. All of that has value. And I feel like, man, I really get my money's worth. Or in other words, I really feel like I get the value that I expect for the amount of money that I give them. I like that place. I have a good feeling about that relationship, right? And I like that. I'm going to keep going back there. Okay. They have what I like and it's a good quality. And um, I feel like I'm getting a deal right? I feel like I'm getting my money's worth. So that is a judgment of value. You have judged, you have surmised that you have gotten a deal or that you have gotten your money's worth. Your money's worth is a phrase that basically says, I got what I expected 
in value. I feel like that exchange was balanced, right? And on the on the flip side of the thing, the business, they can feel great about it, right? But they have to turn a profit or there's no point in doing that business and they'll go out of business. And so they are getting value, which is that money that they can use to pay their bills. They can use to go buy whatever they want. They can use to pay their employees and themselves, um, keep the store running, you know, and that type of thing. They are using the value that they receive from the customers, you know, and they're turning that into more value, right? And so they, if they don't get enough money or if they don't get enough value, out of those transactions, then they go out of business and they're not happy. And that's an imbalance, right? And so it has to work. And this is this is just basic laws of economics, right? And so that everything is a value exchange. Now it works in human relationships too, right? Just person to person. If you are friends with somebody, that friendship is an exchange of value, right? And so you are getting something out of that relationship and giving something out into that relationship, okay? And if if one of those two people in that friendship or that relationship isn't receiving value, and it doesn't mean that you like keep track and that you like keep a little tally mark of who does what, you know, and whatever, and that there's some sort of reckoning or, or some sort of balance statement that's going on, but it just should feel balanced. And if it doesn't, it's a draining relationship, okay? And it's not sustainable, okay? An imbalance of value in, in transactions and exchanges is not a sustainable thing. And so the universe demands balance. You can call it entropy. You can call it karma. You can call it the law of the harvest, uh, whatever you want. But I mean, religion, theology, sociology, they, they all have, they all have this idea of balance. Okay. And science calls it entropy. And basically it means that if something is warm and it's put in a cold environment, then the cold environment will heat up a little bit and the warm thing will cool down a little bit until it's balanced. That's what entropy is, right? Everything breaks down, everything transfers, there's a heat transfer or whatever, right? And so the best business practice is to maintain a balance of value in all of your relationships. And this ensures that your vendors, your employers, your customers are happy. And for creatives, the best business practice to do is to make sure that you are getting value right? And you're not working for less than you are worth. And in addition to that, if you are getting value, that value also sets a precedent for how that person will interact with other creatives as they move forward. So, so there's that, right? And so happy customers and employees and vendors, that equals a higher quality, higher profit, lower costs and sustainability. And so it's important that there is a, an equal value exchange, right? And so People should pay people for the value that they add, right? I don't, I don't show up to work because I feel this greater calling to work for free or whatever. I'm, I like my job. I love it. It's great. I love teaching. It's fantastic. Um, I love illustrating and I love working freelance for clients and doing illustrations and design. Um, I love doing that, right? But I can do my own thing right? And I do, I do my own projects. But if somebody is paying me to do that, I show up because of the value that they're adding to my life, because of the fact that I am receiving value in exchange for that, right? And so the gist of this whole rant that I've gone through is don't exploit people and pay people for the quality of work that they deliver, right? And in doing that, you will have a balance of value and you'll be recognizing the value that people add to your business. And you, if you charge enough, then you'll recognize the value that you are adding to other people's business and that the perceived value that's going on in the industry uh, will be good, right? Because it's hard to make a living as a creative. One of the reasons is, is because everybody is v devaluing creative work. It's theft. It's just straight up theft. And so, so there's that, right? Now, I want to I want to switch gears a little bit. I want to talk about I want to talk about working for exposure, right? Now, Jake Parker did a video recently that I'll link to in the uh, description down there. But he talked about he talked about different types of exposure, okay? Now, that guy that I talked about at the beginning. I've had a number of guys. And you talk to anybody who's been doing any type of creative work for any amount of time longer than a year or two, and they will have been approached by so many people that you wouldn't believe trying to convince them how good it is for their business and how great it is for their portfolio and their reputation and blah, 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 blah. Jake Parker made some great points and I want to expound on those. I used to be completely anti working for free. You know, I never 
I never want to do anything for free. It just, it's just not worth it. Right. And I've softened a little bit on that because there are some situations that are worth it. And the situations that are worth it are when the exposure is not exploitation. Okay. And, and let me explain. Exploitation is when there's an imbalance, right? You have tricked someone into giving you more value than you are exchanging with them, right? Or in other words, I've duped somebody. I've conned them into doing a huge amount of work that will add a ton of value to my business and I'm not giving them anything in return, okay? That is exploitation. So value comes in a couple different in a couple different forms, right? Mostly value is financial compensation. Value is money, right? And most of the time you get paid in money, right? And that works out. And the reason is, is we've all agreed that these little pieces of paper, these little coins or these little numbers that we move around on our phones and our screens are worth something. We, we agree that they have value. It's, it's a system of exchange, right? And that is, that is the simplest way to make sure that you're, you're not getting hosed is that you're receiving enough value, right? And then another time is you're getting value in some sort of altruistic or personal value, right? Now, if my mom comes to me and asks me to do something, I do that because she put in, you know, decades of work. She gave birth to me, right? She's a family member and I don't do a lot of free work for family, um, extended family, but if it's my mom, you know, she has already put way more into this relationship than she's gotten out of it. And I, I am willing to do that. Right. Or if it's a charity that I really believe in, you know, or, or something like that. Now, if the charity comes to me and says, Hey, we're a charity and they try to convince me to work for free, I'm not down with that, right? But if I go to them and say, listen, I really like what you're doing. I'd like to add this to it, you know, or whatever. Um, you know, if that's something that I'm willing to give, um, that's that altruism, I am actually getting something out of that. I get the good feelings and, and whatnot um, that come with that. Then the last, the last type of value is you can have value in exposure. Now, this is extremely rare. Um, because mostly, uh, exploitation is masked as exposure, right? And exposure is this, right? It is extremely beneficial for my name to be linked to something very popular or something of a high quality or something that will basically lead towards more business, right? It helps increase, and I don't like the term personal brand or whatever, but it helps increase the recognition of my name with quality and with a type of work, right? And so there are certain things where there is a legitimate amount of exposure that is attached to my name. But here's the thing. When is the last time that somebody has said, oh yeah, the uh, the Nautica logo, so-and-so did that, right? Very few people actually know who does the design, who does this, who does that. And for the most part, if your name isn't prominently attached to the deliverable itself, you're not getting exposure, right? Now, this is not to say that you need to become like a money grubbing mercenary and you go out there and be really hard about everything and whatever. Do personal projects, right? Team up with people and collaborate and do things, right? But if a business comes to you, okay, and they want what you do, they are asking for something that they can't produce themselves that will add value to their business and they should be willing to pay for that in monetary compensation most of the time, right? And the only exception to that is if you deem that that will legitimately drive a lot of traffic in your direction because your name is prominently displayed, right? And I say this so hesitantly because 99% of the time it seems like it's just somebody trying to get something for nothing and and you really you really do get hosed, right? But um, if you design a flyer or a poster or a brochure or whatever, the only people that know about it, that know that you did it, you're the designer, you're the illustrator, you're the musician that created that piece or whatever, is you and your client, right? And most of the people that see that flyer will have no idea that you made it or how to contact you or how much you charge um, or what it's like to work with you or anything. So consider this for a minute. The type of businessman who manipulates you into thinking that they are paying you in exposure you know, the guy in this illustration, the golden guy in this illustration, he's not going to be surrounded by a bunch of people who understand the value of creative work and are excited to pay for it. His cohorts are more likely to be excited about another creative that they can exploit, 
right? Somebody else to, to, to add to their throne that, the, you know, or whatever that they've, they've built on the backs of, of creatives that they sucked dry. Okay. Now don't get me wrong. I know a lot of business people who love and appreciate creative work and understand the value of it. This illustration is not saying that all people in business are evil and have made their money by bleeding creatives dry, but I hope that those that are considering that course of action uh, might see this and feel uncomfortable. Like, I don't really want to build my business that way. I don't want to be associated with this guy. And so... So that's kind of that's kind of what this whole thing is about. In any case, I hope this gives you a little bit of a little bit of insight on on you know value exchange and working for exposure. Um, you know, get paid, get fifty percent up front. My my rule of thumb, which is just a general rule, you can come up with your own rules, but follow them. Um, is I get fifty percent up front for anything under five thousand dollars. I get thirty percent up front for anything over five thousand dollars, and I don't I don't get started. Uh, you know, I'll talk to people, I'll shoot, I'll shoot some ideas around, I'll brainstorm a little bit with them. I'll, you know, maybe do a sketch or two or whatever, nah, not so much sketches, but you know, I'll do a little bit of work just to just kind of see, you know, but I don't, I don't get anything done until that check clears, you know, and if they say, Oh, I'm in a huge hurry, you know, I've really got to go. I've really got to get this done. I'll, I'll talk more about getting paid and stuff like that in another video. But anyway, appreciate you guys sitting through this. And if you like, uh, if you like what we're talking about here, um, and you want to see me do more of these kind of talk and draw style videos, um, subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Um, you can always go to at Corey Kerr at C O R Y K E R R, um, on Twitter. And you can get it to me mainly on my website, which is Corey Kerr.com. If you go to Corey Kerr.com, you'll see a lot of my work. If you'd like me to do some of that work for you, I'd love to do it. If you want to know more about the things that I'm working on, uh, sign up for my email list. And I'll, I'll email things out occasionally as, as I'm working on it. It's not a very frequent email, but you know, uh, two, three times a month at, at the most. Um, anyway, yeah, go check things out. And, uh, this, this will probably be available as a shirt and poster and, and other things. And if you're on that email list, you will know how to get the, get a hold of those, but, uh, coreycur.com. So get paid for your work. You are valuable. You are creating value and on the business side of things pay for creative work because it adds value to your business. It's worth it. It'll make your business better. People will like you, and they'll give you money.